Hello everyone, thanks for watching. I um, wanted to talk about the new release that's come out. It's uh, the Blu-ray edition, two disc special edition of the Eight Days a Week, The Touring Years, filmed by Ron Howard. And, uh, you know, I saw this movie a couple of times already uh, in the theater, and I liked the movie very much. And, uh, of course, I was going to own it on, the, on DVD or Blu-ray. I picked the Blu-ray. I was going to settle for the DVD. Somebody had mentioned to me that there was some kind of a recall on the DVD set, but not the Blu-ray. Now, don't know what, what the deal is with that, but I went ahead with the Blu-ray. I'm glad I did. Uh, and uh, last night, the first thing I did was watch the bonus disc. I'm not really so interested right now in the movie itself on the first disc because I've, I've seen it now a couple of times. When you take it out of the jacket here, first to show you what it looks like, we got this photo of the Beatles from the Washington Coliseum from February of 1964. Opens up to give you a full picture. To give you an idea of that. Uh, there's the discs. You can see that the the bonus disc is missing because I watched it last night. And there's a booklet here on the side. Very nice book. Detailed. Uh, a lot of photos. Always love that performance of Ringo smashing the drum singing I Want to Be Your Man. I really wish that had made it into the movie. I always like this picture too. This is a nice picture of uh, John and George meeting a very young fan. Very nice. Um, I wasn't going to do a proper uh, video on this, but the reason that I am is because I was so amazed by this bonus footage. Now, the film itself, the documentary that was released, a lot of people complained in the Beatles community. A lot of them were saying uh, they wanted more live performances in full. They were just little snippets here and there. It was too much of a documentary. They were calling it Beatles Anthology Light. They were some people. Uh, some people like me enjoyed it for what it was. I resigned myself to the fact that the actual movie wasn't going to be just a, a live concert all the way through. It was going to be a story with interviews and talking heads and uh, a few rare clips and audio bits um, thrown in there in between, which it was. So for what it was, what they actually wound up coming up with, I liked it. But when I put on this bonus disc in here of stuff that was not in the movie, let me tell you, uh, there was something like, I'm going to say about a hundred minutes worth of material. And in, in many ways, that was like a second movie all its own. So all the bonus material by all you Beatle fans out there has got to be seen. You've got to buy the two-disc special edition. You've got to get all the bonus footage. I cannot rate this stuff highly enough. I cannot endorse it enough as a fan myself. Um, you, you're going to be missing a lot of good stuff. Um, there was a lot of complaints um, among them. In the actual film, you didn't have a lot of stuff about the early Beatles days uh, before 1963, really. You didn't really hear much of anything, really, you know, not much at all, about Hamburg, Germany, in you know, those days. Well, in the bonus footage in this disc, you get a lot of, of time devoted to talking about the Hamburg days and even interviews with uh, important people like the, the Beatles' first manager who brought them to Hamburg, Alan Williams and his wife Beryl they're interviewed here and uh, very nice to see the two of them interviewed uh, which was missing in the Ron Howard film didn't even know they had recorded anything with them uh, they also give a mention to Pete Best briefly that Pete Best was uh, you know originally in the band which he, he doesn't figure in the released documentary but they did shoot stuff around that and decided not to use it uh, apparently, so you, you do see a little bit of Pete. They do talk a little bit uh, about there's a cameraman, the cameraman who filmed uh, from Granada, who filmed the Beatles doing some other guy with Ringo on drums in the cavern. The, some of the earliest footage of the Beatles that are, that's known of, of them actually playing uh, the some other guy footage. You see Ringo on drums, and it was like his first real gig w with the Beatles. And uh, the photographer, the guy who set up the cameras in the cavern discusses that and says how uh, it was uh, about really 
sketchy thing because there are a lot of diehard Pete Best fans who out waiting outside, who uh, you know, uh, were, were ready to beat him up. <laughs> apparently because of, they didn't want Ringo in the van right at the beginning. A lot of interesting stuff that you didn't know about that I was so surprised that they actually recorded and filmed for presentation and maybe to be part of the the overall film. Now of course you can't get everything. I mean look at it when you take the actual release as, as they made it of eight days a week and then you look at the bonus footage you're talking about what would have been a four hour film. I mean you couldn't make a four hour movie out of it. That, you know have to be a mini series or something. Um, a lot of people interviewed on here that uh, weren't interviewed. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of interesting parts that didn't make it. A lot of uh, audio interview clips too. Uh, just good stuff. Real good stuff. For those of you who uh, felt like there was not enough actual live footage and songs in here, you get to see some performances in the bonus footage. You get to see um, You Can't Do That in full from Melbourne, Australia from 1964. And I should also mention, they also uh, show the clip where Paul says it's good to have Ringo back with us again because Ringo had been out and missed some of the Australian tour because of tonsillitis. And they do mention that Jimmy Nickel, the, the replacement drummer, stood in for him. They recorded all this stuff and were going to use it as part of the documentary originally, but didn't. Uh, but it's all here. So in addition to getting You Can't Do That, you get the full uh, She Loves You, which I think is already in the, the film. Right? I, I, I don't know offhand how much of it's in there. You get the entire She Loves You from Manchester, you get the entire Twist and Shout from Manchester, which are fantastic, the entire Help from the 1965 uh, Blackpool Night Out in here, um, you get a, the entire version of Can't Buy Me Love colorized, uh, so, well, Blackpool Night Out is colorized too, a lot of colorized footage here, but as I was saying, 1964 Can't Buy Me Love from the New Musical Express uh, poll winners contest. Um, Watching it all back to back, you have an option here to watch things in segments or just hit the play all option. If you hit the play all option, you get 100 minutes. It's almost like a whole new documentary in its own. Two films. Um, really can't, you know, uh, say much more than that. Uh, we also get uh, interviews with Bill Harry. You know, Bill Harry, who uh, was the editor of Mersey Beat magazine, and just a lot of people that didn't make it into the actual release. You're, you're getting uh, uh, interviews with three of the original female fans who were seen. We spotted them after watching the footage so many times at the Ed Sullivan show and uh, they're in the audience screaming and we know what they look like from watching the clips so often but they actually have up-to-date interviews with them. A lot of stuff here. I'm sure stuff that I'm forgetting. This is all off the top of my head from memory last night. I enjoyed this. My girlfriend sat down and watched it with it and watched it with me, and she really enjoyed it too. She's only a you know semi Beatle fan. She's not a diehard. She really loved it. We had a good time, folks. You got to pick this up. Uh, I don't I can't. I don't know about the DVD version. I'm assuming it's got the same stuff on it, but don't quote me on that. Don't hold me to it. You got to look up the, that stuff yourself to find out what what's on what. But uh, I'm very happy with this Blu-ray bonus edition. Thanks, everybody.